So Yamato is one of those ships that I just kind of gravitate to when I'm not having a great day in World of Warships. This is a ship I feel very, very comfortable in, and I find tends to be pretty consistent, as consistent as a battleship can be. I really do enjoy playing this ship because it can play the sniper role. As we know, the Japanese line is very, very good at that. But it also can do pretty well in closer quarter circumstances thanks to its really good accuracy and of course its overmatch where you can target specific parts of ships allowing you to do really good damage to battleships. You just have to worry about your angling. Uh, we'll see that in a little bit here, but this ship is pretty vulnerable if you are exposing some of the cheeks as we like to call them, but really it's just an oddly shaped citadel located at the front and back of your ship. Ideally, you're going to go directly bow in or stern in when you're in a brawl. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to be taking some citadels. A huge first hit, though, into that Des Moines already starts off this game really, really well. On this map, I'm not a huge fan of it, but if I do spawn on this side of the map, I really enjoy pushing up using this island here. I enjoy any sort of island cover that allows me to push up without being spotted or something that protects me from some of the enemy team, allowing me to at least get a little bit more forward in the match. Another really good salvo into the Schlieffen here. A little lucky, it kind of underled that one, but we do manage to snag a Citadel there, which will be very, very helpful if we decide to push up. Getting in a brawl with a Schlieffen is not really advisable. This is a super ship game, so Yamato isn't quite the top dog in this one, uh, we do have the Satsuma to deal with, as well as a carrier, but uh, that's really just a circumstance where you just have to clump up with your teammates. Here's a great example. The carrier is going to come in for us. That's fine. He's really not going to get multiple drops here because we have an Alaska, myself, and the Schlieffen. We also have a Patree coming up with us. So even though I typically recommend not pushing in in a carrier game for reasons like this, um, where if we do have to go broadside to the Satsuma to dodge the carrier, well, that's pretty dangerous. <laughs> Satsuma's pretty scary. But if the carrier's not able to get multiple drops in on you, that's where it can work to push in. You're still going to take chip damage. That carrier tax will be there. But uh, we should be relatively okay not taking massive chunks from that. And this extra pressure we're able to apply is going to help us hopefully win this flank. Our Alaska kind of pulls out um, broadside on to the Satsuma, Des Moines, and Schlieffen. I'm not so sure about that play, but what it does do is it gets the Satsuma in a really bad position. And you can see exactly where I'm aiming here. There is that cheek we were talking about. Satsuma also has that weakness. That's why you want to go directly bow in in the Yamato. The Satsuma has it a little tougher because it has 50% of its gun power in the rear, where Yamato only has 33%, so it doesn't feel quite as bad. Um, Des Moines pulls out flat broadside. <laughs> yeah, I'm not exactly sure what happened this game. Maybe they saw the Alaska going broadside and decided, yes, I would like to try that as well. <laughs> Fortunately, we do have the accuracy to punish that, and we do manage to get a few citadels in on that Des Moines. But those cheeks and that, in a brawl with a Yamato specifically, as if you can go bow in, that's going to make it as difficult as possible for the enemy Satsuma, Yamato, anything with that 32 millimeters of overmatch to get the Citadel through your bow. If you're broadside even a little bit, certainly if you're able to shoot your rear guns, that is the easiest way to Citadel a Yamato kind of ship. Actually, even easier than broadside a lot of the time because the broadside armor is actually more thickly armored than these cheeks are. So. Uh, be very careful, but we are managing to make it work by pushing in, bow in with the Yamato in 2023. I was not expecting that this game, but uh, we're certainly enjoying it. Although at this point, we definitely are going to stop since Schlieffen secondaries are really, really powerful and I don't really want to take all that chip damage. Not exactly sure where the Fletcher is, so we could be potentially worrying about torpedoes if we push any further. Uh, so we'll just stall out here. 109k, two kills early on in the match. Feels really, really, really nice. And this is why I like to play Yamato when I'm having a bad day or my battleships just aren't hitting much. Yamato just gives me that consistency most of the time. It's not perfect, but it does allow me to play and take positions where it really does rely on us doing some damage, which often occurs at closer brawling kind of ranges. 
a lot of times the reason you want to play so far back in these battleships is due to the second, third, fourth chances you get when you play farther back. You're not relying on your ship to hit that one shot that finishes off an enemy, like a broadside Des Moines, or does massive damage to the enemy Satsuma that's making a small mistake by misangling. Um, if you don't hit that shot at closer ranges, that can really result in you dying very, very quickly. Um, battleships, of course, have those long reloads and can be pretty punished in those closer range scenarios by a DD YOLO or I'm sure you've seen those clips of Yamato's or Musashi's brawling an enemy Des Moines or something like that with a good reload and decent AP at close range and dying very quickly to that. Um, you do have to make those shots count at close range where you get multiple opportunities the farther back you are, you're not as fully committed. And that's where even though Yamato isn't the best brawler in terms of armor or secondaries or anything like that, or heal or special damage controls or anything, the extra accuracy certainly can help you out. Although I don't necessarily recommend brawling quite as much, uh, especially at longer ranges where we can use that overmatch, getting some really good damage in on that Thunderer. Vincent, another great opportunity to overmatch people. That 32 mil plating is pretty common at tier 10 for battleships. That really makes Yamato stand out, at least before the super ships came in and we had more of this 32 mil overmatch. That was a very unique feature of this ship, and I still think makes it very, very strong. Assuming you hit parts that can be overmatched, I guess. <laughs> yep. Yep, we managed to uh, not get that Vincent there with any damage at all, which feels kind of bad. You notice here in this game, we have managed to cross the map, get ourselves in a good position. Two caps under our control, we're ahead on points, which feels pretty nice. Uh, not a lot happened after we managed to win that A flank. Yamato is a little bit slow, and even though we are, as a team, pretty much pushing the enemy spawn, and I usually don't recommend that, uh, we at least do have the two main cap circles. And I did try to push to a little bit more towards B, because a lot of these games that come down to a few ships left often can be won or lost by the cap circles and how many points you have. Someone might be able to sneak a quick back cap on someone and then win a game that otherwise they wouldn't have. So that's why I like to stay a little bit more around the caps. I just really am not a fan of chasing in spawn at all, even though that's where we are. We are in the enemy spawn right now. Uh, overall, most matches, that's not going to work out particularly well. Although this one does seem pretty well in hand, I just find as a general rule, if I get control of one side of the map, in this case it was A, I would much rather push towards B than push up north into the enemy spawn. I find it just works a lot, lot better. Our patrie actually does go down to the eagle, so we are getting down to the wire here. Points are still definitely in our favor, but if we don't finish off this Stalin, uh, that carrier might take us out pretty quick. The Yoshino doesn't have the best AA, but if he manages to turn broadside or something, the Stalingrad might get a really, really nasty hit into him. And then we're just going to be a sitting duck for the eagle if that happened. However, we do manage to finish off that Stalingrad, which feels pretty good. And then it's just hunting down this carrier. That's all that remains. So up to four kills at this point, feeling pretty good. And uh, I tend to look at the number of hits to the amount of damage I have. I remember the day I was playing this game. There were games where I was playing other battleships like uh, I think Republic, Ohio... A few other ones where I'd get around 100k damage on like 80 or 90 hits. <laughs> where we come and play Yamato, suddenly we have over 150,000 damage on less than 50 hits. So that is a bit of a metric. You can judge how well your battleships are performing. And that really is another reason I enjoy playing Yamato as that more consistent battleship. Or if I'm just not having a great day, is it tends to be a little more damage per shell hit which is the goal of a battleship after all. We give up so much in maneuverability and reload uh, just to gain that extra alpha damage. There's our Confederate, which means we've done 20% of at least six enemy ships health. Feels pretty nice as well. And as is pretty common when it comes to the Japanese commander, the special one, Yamamoto, which I don't think I'm actually running right now. Uh, but if you do get a Kraken in Yamamoto, you get an insane reload buff, a crazy heal coming, but typically, that happens right at the end of the game. That's one of the reasons that I don't rate Yamamoto as highly as someone like Halsey, because this is often the case. The game is just well in hand by the time I have a Kraken, 
and then I don't really get to use him all that much. Even if I had him on the ship, which I didn't in this case, it wouldn't have mattered all that much anyway. Speaking of commanders, though, the build is a little weird these days. <laughs> Not that it's all that useful on something like the Amato. I'm someone who just loves brawling so much and uh, wants any opportunity to use secondaries I can. So I am even giving up healing to gain that potential benefit of manual secondaries. They're not bad at closer ranges. Uh, we do have eight kilometers of range on them and they can hit some DDs and do some good damage. But really, if you're trying to maximize what a Yamato is doing, running a more meta build, Urgency Repair Expert is much better. The tier three upgrades are pretty much that as well. They always take Adrenaline Rush, it's just so good. Uh, Grease the Gears, excellent on Yamato, thanks to those extremely slow turrets still. And really any one pointer can work. I like preventive maintenance, don't want to lose those guns really at all, honestly. And I am running ledge mod. I did do, I believe I made a video on Yamato without ledge mod running reload. And it played really, really well as well. But I'm someone who just values consistency so much that I'll give up a little bit of reload to gain that little bit more accuracy. I find that just much more enjoyable to play and less frustrating when I am hitting a little bit more consistently with both aiming systems upgrades. Concealment, of course, very nice for surprising cruisers maybe, like that Des Moines early game. And then Propulsion Mod, sometimes useful to get out of bad situations. I tend to talk about this where I want two out of the three fire prevention upgrades, where we have one here as a signal, we have one here as a upgrade on our ship, and then we have one in the commander build. So I take two out of three, and typically that results in me taking propulsion mod as an extra way to dodge some incoming fires. So that's the Amato. Uh, it's always good, honestly. <laughs> this is the ship that I've played the most in this game. I have a lot of games in the Amato, and I've always enjoyed it, and I think I still will. So that's why it's one of those ships I like to recommend to beginners, because it's just always going to be a good battleship. I don't really see that changing in the future, and it can really show you how to play the battleship class really, really well. So... Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.